welcome to Creative Art. I am Nilima and in today's tutorial we are going to make this beautiful dream catcher using all natural materials. So friends do watch the complete tutorial to make this beautiful beautiful dream catcher for yourself and do subscribe to Creative Art for more creative art tutorials and do press the bell icon so you don't miss any updates on a recent art form. Now let's check out all the materials. To make this beautiful dream catcher, this time I'm going to use all the natural items from the natural range of Itsy Bitsy. In the bottom here we have some handmade Shola flowers which look very beautiful and stay like this forever. There are four to five different designs of Shola full available in the natural range. Other than that, I'm also going to use a few naturally available flowers from nature. These are some leftovers from cotton flower maybe and this is pine cone. This is shells of another kind of cotton. Other than that, we are also going to make use of feathers. So they do have different sizes of feathers. I have got all the three different sizes of feathers here. Other than that, I'm going to use a ribbon. This is an off-white color ribbon, a roll of thread. So this is going to be one of the most important item in a dream catcher and a base to work with. So for my base, I'm going to use a wooden ring, which looks like this. This is actually a embroidery hoop and it sizes about 12 inches so either you can buy this hoop or else you can also buy this type of aluminium hoops which are available in different sizes other than that i also have here few wooden beads this time these are plain wooden beads these ones are also available in color and in different sizes other than that few of the things which i naturally collected these wine rings which are handmade and i'll show you to use them in my future videos and few dried flowers which i have from my next tutorial so friends these are all the items you can use to make a beautiful and natural dream catcher as this is our first dream catcher tutorial i would like to keep the first tutorial as simple as possible so now friends, let's start the tutorial. First of all, let's start by making a web around this embossing hoop, which is also our base for this DIY. And this is the white thread which I'm going to use. Let's separate both the hoops. So when you separate this hoop, you'll get two rings. This is the most plain and simple ring you can use. So I'm going to keep this one aside and this time we're going to use this one which has a locking side which does not have a meeting. So for that, let's tighten it up. This is tight enough and you see it is completely connected as the first one. Each one can be used to make one separate dream catcher. Next, to make this web in a more easier way, pull out one side of the thread and start tying it around a needle or a stick. Make sure that you're tying enough amount of thread around the needle or stick so that it is enough for your entire weaving process. This is how it will look. And this is much more easier to pass through while weaving instead of this kind of a thread ball. So make sure you are ready with this thread. Next to make it more easy and systematic I definitely like to mark my points of first knot. So this is how I made a general map so I can easily calculate the points and this gives you a very good and easy axis. So exactly try to place the loop center to center so that the markings will be exact when you have a ending like this which we have so try to place it in between these lines or in between two knots so that all these knots will be equal now using a pen do a general marking line to line okay and now we have them all so this is how all the marking points look they are equally on distance now start by tying one knot around 
always make sure that your first and last knots are very tight now after tying our first knot remember this very easy and simple step that you simply have to tie a loop so here we go from the out to in and tie a loop right here you see exactly on the spot point hold your thread go out to in and then loop on the second point this is very simple go out to in third point and this is how you each time get a loop just keep going out to in in this way and loops out to in in this way and make loops do the same out to in to the first point and you made a final loop right here so you see this is how our first loop looks we are back to the same point right here now next what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the needle from the first point pass it through okay and then tie our first loop exactly in the middle this is half you see so this is the only point where you will have a double thread do the same again pass it through and a loop try to keep it in the middle so you get this point pass it through a loop you tie a knot again at the same point then this is the next point where you have to tie a knot exactly in the middle of the thread okay when you come back to the same point you have to tie a knot in the middle of the thread so as it was before you exactly get double thread in this point and then you have to keep doing the same start making the loop as usual come back to the same point and then tie another loop okay then you again start from the middle each time you start making these loops your web bill grow bigger and bigger it's a very very simple and easy process to do it gets easier if you have something to hold uh, this base with So each time when you keep moving inside this thread parts start getting smaller and smaller and a little loose as compared to the edges. So even this part has to get slim with it so that you can easily pass it through.
as we move closer and closer to the center the paths start becoming narrow and so this time i'm just using a toothpick to pass all uh, through these sections and i'll finally close it to the center so this is a very attentive part i'm going to take each time a closer look to weave this net and i'm going to continue it till the end till the last point so that we can get this kind of beautiful and absolute web so i'm going to do the center part by myself finally when we come back to the center point try to keep weaving as much as possible to the last end where there is actually no point to pass the thread so at the final point to secure this thread, I'm going to input one purl from this side and then stitch this purl. Exactly in the center point like this. You see, when this is in the center point, this will give a good attraction point to the entire web. Then turn out the same wind charm and input one more purl inside. So here you have got one more center point. So from both the side you have finally got a center point which is purl. Tie a knot and secure these final pearls now tie a final knot to secure it in this way and then using a scissor place a fine cut so finally this is how our web will look it has such a absolution and a perfect center with the pearl from both the sides it looks good and mickey likes to sit in shadow of this dream catcher now after building a perfect web which looks like this and this is the main part of a dream catcher i have arranged all the dry flowers in this way which we are going to sew using a needle and thread to the entire ring and it will look like this but before that let's start making few feather strings like these and for that i'm going to use two different sizes of feather first one is this big sizes of feather which are about five to eight inches they are quite big in size and the next one are about half of it which is about like three to four inches in size so what we're going to do is we're going to take one big feather and then we're going to have the next small feather you can either select one or two small feathers like these here i have taken two small feathers and then using a string we have to tie all the three feathers in this way so before tying a string i'm going to prepare my string you can also use a needle to insert the pearls i'm going to have three pearls and then take three feathers one big feather and two small feathers place it together in one end and then ready to tie it with the string in this way hold one end of the string and tie the other very neatly and tightly now tie a nice and tight knot And then cut the small end of the string when you're sure about the knot. Use some glue. Here I'm going to use Fevicryl Fabrica glue. And place some glue on the knot part on the string to ensure that the string won't come out in future. Now I'm going to cut the extended part of wing which was this. And as we have inserted the pearls. Bring the pearl down in this way. So this is how this end will look. Now I'm going to add more feathers. Now hold the next pair of feathers. Here I have more 
two small feathers and then one big feather hold all three together in this way and then tie them together blue on the knot so this is fixed cut the excess using scissor bring the pearl down to the knot you can also attach the pearl using glue right on the knot in this way and then we will have string of feathers so you can make five to seven string of feathers so having these feathers would make a great advantage so I'm going to make more strings in the same way so now in the same way I have made more 5 strings of feathers and this is how all of them look. So let's start attaching them on the bottom side of the ring and with these feathers I'm also going to place this white ribbon. You can use white lace and you can also use white satin ribbon that is completely your choice. I'm simply going to tie one knot at a time. Insert it from one side and just measure the length you want. You can also measure a string length you want. This much is enough. Add the feather on the same knot. In the same way attach 5 to 7 other strings of ribbon. I do have only 5 strings of feathers so I am going to do 5 strings of ribbon. And this is how they will look because of the flurry and white size. This is how they will look. And on the edges do make a cut like this. So this will look better. Next we are going to attach 5 strings of feathers right in the middle of these strings. So one by one hold the feathers, keep just one inch distance from the ring and tie a knot. And now this is how it looks. So now let's start placing all the dry flowers on the ring and we are going to stitch it up using a string and needle. So I'm going to use a big size needle which is available in Itsy Bitsy for this type of projects. I'd like to start from the center. So using a big needle you have to insert it from the flower in this way. Insert the needle in this way from the back side of the flower. To place it exactly where we want, we have to go few rounds. Now this is how I have attached the first flower. Now let's do the same for the second. After this, let's attach this flower.
Now I'm going to stitch this dry flower stem also. Now I'm going to add few hydrangeas here. Insert the bunch and gently stitch it up. Now this is how this side looks because all the flowers are stitched up so they won't fall and I have added few dried flowers on these sides though I did plan to add these type of pine cone flowers but they are really difficult to go through needles so I added these dry flowers that I newly got for my resin art and these go perfectly well with our theme so now friends in the same way I'm going to make the next half of this and show you how does it looks okay and now finally friends this is how beautiful our dream catcher looks when i have completed decorating the entire ring i absolutely love all the ribbons and feathers that we have attached and now it is ready to hang so now let's hang it and finally this is how it looks